Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. Today we've got a bit of a shorter video, a more relaxed video, taking a look at this thing. This is an old DVD duplicating machine that I got from work when they were throwing it out about one and a half years ago. I've got a much bigger video planned for next week, so I think we should actually open it up, see what's inside, clean it up and see exactly how it works, because this is one interesting bit of kit. Anyway, let's take a look. So, here we have the Verity Systems Power Tower. It has eight dual-layer DVD rewritable drives, and I assume this was used for duplicating DVDs. I'm not exactly sure what it would have been used for at the place I worked, at a video production company, but uh, I never saw them deal with DVDs, you could say. Uh, I've got it plugged in, so I think we should power it up and see what happens. Okay, so it seems to be booting up. Actually, I just want to totally do this. <laughs> wow, hey, there's a disc in here. So yes, it has a total of eight dual layer DVD burning drives, which is pretty incredible. And I'm gonna assume the ones that have the two X's next to them don't actually work. But um, uh, what is it saying? Image. So I'm gonna assume you can cycle through all these and probably select a drive as a source, and then also verify the disc. Oh, we're actually gonna try burning a disc using this machine as well. But, oof, that made a loud noise. Anyway, I think it's time we open it up and see what's inside. So before we actually open it up, I think it's time we just look around the back. So as we can see at the bottom, we've got the power supply. It looks like a standard computer power supply, but we can also see that there aren't any standard ports you'd see in a tower that looks like this. But we've also got the manufacturing um, plate here, which um, basically says it was made in the United Kingdom by Verity Systems. I'm going to assume this was made around 2004, because I don't think dual-layer DVD drives existed before then. And this case is white, which is quite rare to see on um, more modern desktops. And it looks like we've also got two 80 or 60 millimeter fans that I would assume are both for cooling. Anyway, let's open it up. So to open up this hefty machine, all we have to do is remove these two Phillips head screws on the back. And I actually weighed this machine and it is 17.7 kilograms. I don't know how much that is in pounds. I'm going to assume it's a lot. Anyway, let's try and get this case off without causing too much of a ruckus. Wow, there we have it. So that's what's inside of this machine. All right, well, let's dig a little bit further and see what else we can find. Something I've just noticed is the 120 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar IDE hard drive. So really this suggests that this system is a lot newer than I originally thought. And I'm also guessing it can store the disk images on this drive, because why else would you have a drive so large in a DVD copying machine? And powering this machine we have a 300 watt power supply. I'm going to assume that's probably way more than enough to power 9 total drives. Looking at the information on one of the drives, it turns out they were manufactured in August of 2005, making this system nearly 15 years old. But honestly, with the white plastic and just how yellowed it's gotten, it looks a lot older than that. While there really isn't that much to see or remove from this device, I am going to remove this little drive here, which connects to every single DVD rewritable drive as well as the hard drive. So we're gonna see if we can get it out of here without forgetting what gets plugged into what. So there we go, I've unplugged all of the IDE drive cables. I also labeled them 1 to 8 and then HD for the cable, but it looks like a lot of them might be daisy chained together. And now all we gotta do is unscrew the four Phillips head screws and remove that drive. So all we've gotta do to remove the brains of this little machine is unscrew these four Phillips head screws, two on either side. And hopefully it's gonna slide out. Okay, there's like 10 different cables plugged into it. So let's see how we go. Okay, here we go. So in the moment of truth, uh, there are a lot of cables. <laughs> Holy heck. So we should just be able to slide it out now that I've got all the cables poking through relatively well. Although this is a little more challenging than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, we got it. So here we have the internals of the machine. I'm not even gonna really pretend to know exactly what I'm looking at. We've got a total of eight IDE slots, 
what looks to be three processors or some kind of graphics processors. Uh, these look like RAM chips, so they probably are. And this whole board is apparently a PCI Base Copy Plus ARS, which is the brains of this copying machine. And now that we've taken a look at the inside, let's actually put it back together and try and burn a disc. All right, so now we have to put it all back into here. So I reckon we'll start with just slotting all, all of these cables in as much as we can. Ugh, this is not exactly the easiest thing to do, but I'm sure we'll be able to work out which ones go where because we labeled them. Otherwise, it would probably end in disaster. There we go. All right, so we should be able to line this up. Oh, that does not sound good. And yeah, all right, so let's uh, put all the cables in. So it actually seems that it is a bit of a challenge to get these IDE cables back in, but at least they're the kind of cables that actually have the little notch so you know which way you're supposed to put them in. Because the uh, last thing I want is to put it all back together and turn out half of them are upside down. Cool, so we've got the whole thing back together once again. And before we clean it up, fingers crossed uh, it still works, so let's find out. So everything appears to work fine, so let's start cleaning it. Even though the X's are actually there for a reason, uh, I'm still gonna actually remove them and I can find a probably a neater way to probably show that the drives don't work. Now, while I did want to um, do some whitening to the plastic on the front of this machine, um, problem was we have had a lot of rain and cloud for the last uh, week or so, and I haven't had enough hours of sunlight to be able to whiten the plastic. I've bought all the materials and we can do that and I'll probably do that with the next project I work on. Okay, here we go, we have it all set up. So now it's time, I think we try and copy a disc. So I've just printed up a random DVD and uh, we'll put that into the first drive. Now I think we've got to actually select uh, God, I'm sorry, I have to lean into the shot like this. I just can't see the, um, okay, select source number eight. Uh, number one, which is I assume is the top one. We'll use that as the source. And we've got a blank disc, which we're gonna put in another drive. Copy 2,800, yes, because I put a video file, my last video, which was 10 minutes, which was 2.8 gigabytes. So let's try and copy it. All right, it's, uh, it's doing it, it's copying. Cool, so it seems to be copying away pretty well. We're just about up to 20%. And as we can see, it seems to be counting down. So I assume it's going to take about another five minutes to copy this disc. And I'll put it into a drive and see if it works. Okay, so it looks like we've run into a bit of an issue, a source drive reading error. Okay, so I'm actually curious to see whether it copied anything over to the other disc. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, it looks like it's actually copied quite a bit of information to the disc, so I'm actually gonna plug it in and see if it does anything. So I've tried playing the disc on my MacBook, however, nothing will actually show up. Now, I could theoretically try again. Uh, only problem was, that was my last blank DVD that I have. So we're gonna have to leave it at that. So there we have it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this more improvised video and we'll have a much longer one next Saturday. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you then.